Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on hexadecimal literals. I'm going to go ahead and open up my web browser to my website here, javacjava.com, and I'm going to hit the begin button. Scroll down here on the tutorials to hexadecimal literals. The hexadecimal literals are whole numbers of the base 16 numbering system. They are a subgrouping of the general category of integer literals. Hexadecimal literals are whole numbers that can be assigned to variables of the following data types, byte, char, short, int, and long. Hexadecimal literals begin with a 0x uppercase x or a 0 lowercase x prefix. The hexadecimal numbering system uses the following numbers and letters. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, F, E, and F. Now, A, B, C, D, and F represent the decimal numbers 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. The letters A, B, C, D, E, and F can either be uppercase or lowercase. So I've got a nice little, we'll call this a small chart here, um, showing you the decimal representations of the numbers 0 through 15 and how they correspond to the hexadecimal syntax here. A equals 10, B 11, C 12, D 13, E 14, F 15. This tutorial will teach you how the hexadecimal numbering system works and how to assign hexadecimal literals to variables. Let's talk a moment for about the caret symbol and exponents. Exponents are shorthand for multiplication of the same number over and over and over again. The number of times a number is multiplied by itself is represented following the caret symbol. Here's how it works. Number and the caret symbol, also stated as to the power of, and then the number of times to repeat the multiplication. Okay? So 4 to the power of 2 equals 4 times 4 equals 16. 5 to the power of 3 equals 5 times 5 times 5 equals 125. 2 to the power of 5 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 32. So that's pretty basic. Let's go over a quick review of the decimal system here and how it works in a little bit more in-depth um, explanation. Everybody knows the decimal system. You can count from 1 to 100, then keep going on forever if you wanted to. Try to remember way back to elementary school math. We learned that numbers in the decimal system are organized into columns. Because you have been using the decimal system so long, you might not even realize the columns are read from right to left. The rightmost column is the ones, next is the tens, next is the hundreds, next is the thousands, and so on and so forth. The decimal system is in fact the base 10 numbering system. So your ones is in fact 10 to the power of zero. Now any number raised to the power of zero is one, and you'll just have to take my word for that. You can go out and Google that if you want to, to see proof of concept on that. So. Um, then your tens column is 10 to the power of 1, right? And any number raised to the power of, the, of 1 is the same number itself, so 10 to the power of 1 is 10. 10 to the power of 2 is 10 times 10, 100. 10 to the power, power of 3 is 1,000, okay? So you take the value that's in this column and you multiply it by 10 to the power of 0, which is 1 times 1. Take the value in this column and you multiply it by 9 times 10 to the power of 1. 10 to the power of 1 is 10, so you end up with 90. Set that number aside over here. And then you get um, 4 times 10 to the power of 2, which is 4 times 100. You get 400, set that number over here. 7 times 10 to the power of 3, which is 7 times 1,000. You set that over here, then you add them all up. So 7,000 plus 400 plus 90 plus 1 equals 7,491. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into the, the good stuff here, the hexadecimal numbering system. Just like the decimal system, the hexadecimal system is read from right to left. The rightmost column is 16 to the power of 0, next is 16 to the power of 1, next is 16 to the power of 2, next is 16 to the power of 3, and so on and so forth. You may recall that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1, which I talked a little bit about above there. Okay, so the way this works is you take your number in the rightmost column and multiply that number by 16 to the power of 0, which is always 1, and then you remember that number. Then you work your way to the left, multiplying whatever number is in each column by an ever-increasing power of 16. You add up all the results and you will have your decimal conversion. Here are the decimal numbers 0 through 23 in a hexadecimal, oh, I got a typo, that should actually be 0 through 33 in a hexadecimal chart. We'll go ahead and move on here. So I'll fix that on the website later. Um, so what we've got 
is our 16 to the power of 0. Any number raised to the power of 0 equals 1. 16 to the power of 1, that number equals itself, which is 16. 16 times 16 equals 256. And 16 times 16 times 16 equals 4096. Okay, so the, um, the decimal number 9 matches all, all of the number the hexadecimal number nine all the way through bit on that because you're taking nine times one obviously is that right then a b c d e and f right we discussed that a little bit up top there that all works now 16 is where it becomes a little bit different right so hexadecimal one zero right you take the zero and you multiply that by one you get zero and then you take your one times 16 and that's how you get zero plus one times 16 equals decimal 16. okay 17, very pretty simple here. Um, one times, this is in the ones column, and then one times, this is in the 16s column. So one plus one times 16 equals 17. So let's kind of cruise all the way down here, one A. We know that A is in fact the number 10. So 10 here plus one times 16s column right there, it's 26, okay? Let's come down here to 32, right? So, um, zero in the ones column we got a two in the 16s column so zero plus two times 16 equals 32 33 is basically you've got a one in the ones column a two in the 16s column so one plus two times 16 equals 33 okay so you could continue using that pattern all the way down and in, in an infinite number of much larger numbers there okay so what we're going to do now is just kind of Say, okay, well, what does FF mean? So F we know is 15, right? And that's in the ones column, so we take 15, and then F over here is 15 as well, 15 times 16, so it is um, 240. So 15 plus 240 equals 255, okay? Now we'll say, what is uh, hexadecimal FFF? Well, 15 plus 15 times 16, and this F over here is in the 256 column, so 15 times 256, so 15 plus 240 plus 3840 equals 4095. Now it's no coincidence that this number 4095 is one less than, than this number up here for the 4096, because if we had a number one and then followed by three zeros, that would in fact be 4096. So you can kind of see how that works there, okay? And then let's do four Fs, right? So 15 plus 15 times 16's column, 15 times the 256's column, 15 times the 4096 column. So we get 15 plus 240 plus 3840 plus 611, 61440 equals 65535. Now, if you watch my char data type video, you probably say, oh, wow, that is the maximum value of a 16-bit Unicode character and that's no coincidence that I chose to to put this up here because you'll see in the in the tutorial that I do on the um, The character literals that will actually end up using um, Some of the hexadecimal notation to describe 16-bit char data type um, Unicode characters Okay, let's go ahead and come down here and we'll do our good old copy and or highlight control C or right click and copy. Let's move the web browser off of the screen here. Let's go to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start and run, type in CMD. Okay, when DOS prompt opens, first thing you wanna do is type in Java C. You'll see a bunch of stuff scroll up or you'll see an error message. If you see an error message, um, then you don't have the Java development kit installed properly. Go ahead and um, look at my tutorial on that, get it installed properly, and then go ahead and come back to this. I'm going to type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. And backslash tells it to go down to the root. I'm going to type in MD, which is short for make directory Java. And I already have it. If you didn't, it would go ahead and create it. We'll go ahead and change to that that directory here and we'll type in make dir hexadecimal literals and that's a long one there type in cd space and then I'm going to type in h I'm going to hit the tab on my keyboard and that will automatically fill that so I have to type all that in to change directory to that and we'll type in notepad hex 
hexadecimal literals dot java. Hexadecimal literals dot java is our source code file name. Must always have the dot java extension, also known as the compilation unit. Yes, we'll hit Control V to paste that in, or you could right click and select copy. Okay, or paste. Let's go ahead and save this. And so basically, we've got the five different primitive data types that you can assign a um, hexadecimal literal to byte, short, int, chart, long. And then we've got some examples of hexadecimal literals here, too. So you can see here I've got, they all have this prefix of 0x, and you can see the x is uppercase here, lowercase here, right? Um, in this particular one here, I've got a lowercase f. So the a, b, c, d, e, and f, that's part of the hexadecimal literal, can be either upper or lowercase, okay? So pretty straightforward here. Um, you know, we did, um, on the website, we did the 255, 4,095, 4, and 65,535. Um, we did the representations here of 65. And just take a minute to look at this one right here and think about this. So, you know, this is the ones column and this is the 16s column, okay? So, um, one times one is obviously one, so we'll set one aside. And then four times 16 is 64. So 64 plus one equals 65. Okay, so hopefully that will start kind of sinking in and making some good sense on this. Uh, same thing up here. Um, you got the hexadecimal one zero. So you got a zero in the columns. You know, this is the 16s column. So that's why that equals 16, zero plus 16, right? Um, then down here with the long here, we've got just this really large number starts off with the number seven and then it's followed by 15 F's, and then the L to indicate it's a long, and this happens to be the largest positive number that you can store to any of the primitive data, data type variables, okay? And then we'll just go ahead and display those. So let's go save this. CLS to clear our screen. Let's type in Java C for the Java compiler and the name of the file that we're going to. And what I did right there is I typed in Java C and I hit H and I hit tab and that filled in that name of the file because that's the only file on that directory right at the moment. So it's a little shortcut there. Uh, let's go ahead and hit enter and it compiled just fine. We'll type in Java and I'll hit H again and tab. And now it, it found the class file that, that Java C just built that, which is the compiled bytecode for that source code file there. I'm just gonna back that up there so I don't have to type all that in. We cannot say Java hexadecimal literals dot class, it won't know what to do because you're invoking the hexadecimal literals class name, which is this class definition name right up in here, right? So the Java, the JVM goes out and searches through all those dot class files and finds this class right here and says, oh, okay, I see this class definition. And then it looks for the special declaration of the main method, public static void main. And then it goes ahead and executes everything in the code block there, so. I know I haven't gone over in a few tutorials on how that actually works behind the scenes, so I thought I'd throw that in there. Okay, and we just go ahead and run that. And so our results are exactly what we expected there. Um, one, right? And then hexadecimal A we know is 10. F is 15, right? Um, one, zero, 16, 255, 40, 95, 65, 35, the char are my favorite good old uppercase A, which is 65 on the ASCII chart, and an upper B, which is 66. And then here is our giant long here. Don't forget to ever put this L on there if you've got a number this large or it'll fail to compile. Throw up a nice little error there. And so basically everything, everything looks good. All right, let's go ahead and close out of that. Close out of that. I just wanna leave you with one final thought. You will see hexadecimal literals used uh, quite often in the Java language. Especially you'll see them on a fairly regular basis when you're assigning a, um, a hexadecimal literal to a variable of the char data type. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.